Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a slightly different video than usual. This is an unboxing of a fake, a fake iPhone 6 mock-up that actually works. This is the first of its kind, and it's actually a pretty high quality unit, relatively speaking. It's fairly inexpensive, but it's a functioning phone with a 4.7 inch display, an earpiece, a headphone jack, uh, the sensors for uh, ambient light sensing, and a proximity sensor along with all the cameras. We have a rear facing camera, a front facing camera, all the buttons are functioning, the speakers are functioning, so it's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see this is an iPhone 5 box. It's a counterfeit iPhone 5 box and the phone doesn't exactly fit in here, but you can lift the lid here. And there we go. There is our 4.7 inch iPhone 6 or what's believed to be the design of the iPhone 6. And it's starting to look like that this is indeed the final design because we are seeing leaked parts which do reflect this design. Now this did come with a piece of plastic covering the screen, but I have been using this unit. Now inside the box, you'll actually find more counterfeit stuff that resembles an iPhone. So you'll even have this little literature packet here, designed by Apple in California with a SIM ejection tool for the SIM tray on the side. Hello, and let's see what we got inside. You can see again, this is the iPhone 5. And they've even included the complete set of counterfeit Apple accessories from the wall adapter to a lightning cable. So this does use lightning for charging, not micro USB. And then we have a set of ear pods, which are also counterfeit. They look the same, but you can see the colors don't quite match here. You can see that the uh, remote control is a little more yellow looking than the ear pods themselves, but pretty convincing fakes overall. So as you can see here, it is plastic, although it looks pretty high quality, relatively speaking, certainly much higher quality than the mock-ups I've looked at earlier. But the big difference here is it actually works. So you can unlock the device. You can swipe up to get to your control center like so, not the greatest performance here, come on. There we go, there's control center with our brightness slider, our quick access toggles for Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi of course does work. Uh, we also have our flashlight toggle because this does include an LE flashlight on the back, come on, come on. There we go, flashlight on the back. Now if you look at the design on the back, again, it looks very much like the mock-ups, including these antenna insulators, which do appear to be in the final production version. Now, as you can see here, we have this Apple logo, which is cut through the body of the phone, and that's consistent with the iPad Air and iPad Mini launched last year. And it does look like the iPhone is going to pick this up because this is also in the production casing that we've seen leaked recently. Again, we have these antenna insulators just above here, which again also look like they're in the production version. Toward the top, we have our two megapixel autofocusing camera along with an LED flash. Uh, we also have a hole here for the microphone, but it doesn't look like this is a functioning microphone. Now toward the top, you have an earpiece, a front-facing camera, ambient light sensor, and proximity sensor. All of that is functioning. On the left side, you'll find your volume rocker, or your volume buttons here. These volume buttons actually have a slightly different design from the mock-ups I looked at earlier. You can see that the space around the buttons are actually recessed, which is consistent with the iPad Air mock-up that TLD today looked at earlier, which I'll post in the description of this video, so you can take a look at that. We also have our functioning mute switch here. And of course you do have haptic feedback because this is an Android phone so that mute switch does, or the vibration motor in here does work with haptic feedback. Now down below you have a home button with that ring around the button. Of course this doesn't actually have a fingerprint sensor built in. Toward the bottom you have your functioning loudspeaker, a lightning connector, as well as a headphone jack and microphone. Now on the right hand side you'll find the repositioned sleep wake button along with our nano SIM tray which is made out of metal and again you can use this as a phone so you can install the SIM. So just to give you an idea of the size comparison between this and the iPhone 5S, again, you can see a lot more screen real estate. I think it's about the perfect size here. It's not as one handleable as the 5S, but I think 4.7 inch is the sweet spot. Anything bigger tends to be a little too big. And you can see that the bezels on the iPhone are still kind of large. It tends to be a tall phone because it does have to accommodate that fingerprint sensor at the bottom of the phone. Now, if you look at the back, you can see the design is very similar, but the iPhone 4.7 inch is bigger and the theme here is rounded. Even the front glass is rounded. No more chamfered edges, no more hard angles. We have this very rounded design, which feels a lot more comfortable to handle in the hand, especially with such a large phone. Now, the thing I've noticed about the mock-up with that rounded edge is how nice it is to brush across the edge with your finger with that nice rounded glass panel. It feels a little more comfortable than the harder, sharper edge of the iPhone 5S. Now, if you look at our Geekbench 3 square as you can see, this is pretty low-end hardware, which is to be expected. This really isn't meant to actually replicate the performance of the iPhone, but you can see here the operating system is Android 4.2.2. 
You can also see that it has the model number of iPhone 5C. Now, if you look at the processor, this is a single core, one gigahertz MediaTek processor, so pretty low end. We also only have half a gig of RAM and we also have two gigs of internal storage. All right, so let's take a look at the user interface, which is actually powered by Android 4.2.2 with an iOS 8 skin on top of it. So you can see we can swipe to unlock it. We can swipe up to get to our control center here, hopefully. So you can see we have things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You, we have our brightness slider with automatic brightness. So we do have that ambient light sensor to automatically adjust the brightness of the screen. We have our volume controls here. We have our vibration controls. So we do have a vibration motor in here, which does work with haptic feedback. So if you ever wanted to know what an iPhone with haptic feedback feels like, well, this is the phone to get. We also have our flash. So we do have an LED flash on the back, just like you would expect on an iOS 8 device. Uh, you also have apps here that are very similar to the iPhone app. So for example, if we go to the utilities folder up here, if you go to the calculator, you'll see the calculator app. Again, just different font, but the design is actually pretty similar. Now, just like with iOS 8, you can tap and hold on these icons to rearrange them or to uninstall them. Now, we also have a built-in FM radio. You just have to connect a set of headphones. And again, the headphone jack does work here. So there we go. I now have my FM radio and I can tune to the station I want. Now the microphone and center click button does work on the remote control, but the volume controls do not. Now we also have the messaging app, which is just the SMS app. It does work. And we also have our phone dialer, which looks like the iOS phone dialer as well. And then we have FaceTime here, which is a little different here. We have 3G FaceTime. I'm not sure how that works, but basically it looks like a phone dialer. And then we have a file manager, which is not something you see on iOS 8. So you have your phone storage here, so you can see the photos on your device. Unfortunately, sometimes with apps like this, uh, if you dig down into them, you don't have a back button like you would on an Android phone, so you have to actually have to close the app to jump back. So you can see the home, you can see your phone storage, you can see all the folders, that sort of thing. Now, if you double tap the home button, it brings up the recent apps. In fact, you can scroll through them just like you would with iOS. You can swipe up on them to close them, tap them to reactivate them. So again, works very similar to iOS 8. You can also get to Google now by tapping and holding the home button. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow. That didn't quite work right, but that's, uh, that's close enough. You can also swipe down to get to your search. So for example, if you want to search for the weather app, I've already started searching for it. And there we go. It brings up the weather app, which is actually the Yahoo weather app, which did come pre-installed. Now this is an Android phone and the Google Store does work here so you can go to the Google App Store. So instead of the iOS App Store, you go to the Google App Store and you can install uh, Google Apps. Unfortunately, most of them don't work because they require the use of Google Play services and that unfortunately cannot be installed on this device for whatever reason. Now let's take a look at the camera app. And as you can see here, the interface is very familiar here. So we have video mode, photo mode, square, and panorama. Uh, we also have the ability to switch between our front-facing and rear-facing camera. So you can see that we do have a selfie camera. And then you can switch back here. And we can take a look at some of the features of this camera. So you do have tap to expose. You don't have autofocus in this camera. I may have said autofocusing earlier, uh, but it does not have an autofocusing camera. You can swipe to get to photo mode. Take your photograph. There you go. You can pinch in and out. To zoom in on your scene, again, this is just digital cropping. We also have panorama mode. So if we start recording a panorama, it will start coaching us uh, to record that panorama. Now down here, instead of filters, we have our settings panel. So we have GPS location, which you can turn on. Exposure, so you can select your exposure here manually. We have our white balance and anti-flicker. So you, actually, that's kind of interesting to have this anti-flicker mode. I uh, also have your camera settings up here. Unfortunately, it looks like they're grayed out right now, but you can see we have a two megapixel camera and then we have our video mode here as well. So we can turn on our microphone, I guess, audio mode, which is normal. I guess you can select different audio mode, meeting mode. Not sure what that's about. Time lapse interval. So I guess we have a time lapse camera in here and then we have our video quality, which is kind of not very informative. So we have high or fine. Now they've added a little Samsung to this phone. So you can take a screenshot by swiping across the screen with your palm. And if you control the volume, you can hear that distinctive Android sound. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit board, with a preview of what might be 
the next generation iPhone. Now, as many of you are aware by now, mockups based on leaked blueprints have begun circulating. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this quick video of a fake iPhone 6. My goal here was just to show you what a functioning iPhone 6 might look like in the end. And actually, I'm a big fan of this size and design. I know a lot of people don't like those antenna insulators, but I think in the final production version, even in this mockup, I think they look just fine. But the final production version will use higher end materials, metals, and that sort of thing. So definitely impressed overall by the design and even impressed by this mock-up. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see an even better video with more detail, take a look at Danny Winjet's video. I'll post a link in the description below. He did a great video. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. So there we go, the iPhone 6, which I almost dropped here, but that's okay because it's just a mock-up.